Hey, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about CleanFeed. It is a remote recording software that could dramatically improve your audio recordings if you interview guests on your own for your podcast or YouTube video series. On today's episode, we're gonna discover some of the cool features that it has, why it's better than recording via Zoom, and I'll help you navigate through a basic tutorial of CleanFeed. So first of all, let's talk about why clean feed, because um, it's not necessarily a fit for everybody. So uh, my number one reason is it's going to get you better audio quality if you're a podcaster than just recording via Zoom. I like clean feed a lot because they just make the whole process really clean and simple. It doesn't have a lot of extra fancy bells and whistles. It's straightforward. And even as a professional podcaster and media person, I really appreciate that. I like simple. I like clean. I like things that don't crash all the time. The other thing that I like about it from that perspective is for my clients who may record their own audio, who may record their own interviews. Again, it keeps things pretty simple while elevating the quality of the product a little bit as well. So that's kind of why you might want to use clean feed. If you've maybe done interviews via Zoom, but you'd like to increase that audio quality, this is kind of that next step. Now, if you are not a fan of any extra technology involved or any extra buttons to push and you're just really comfortable with Zoom, maybe you stick with Zoom and you deal with the audio quality trade-off. For me, it's worth a little extra learning, master a program like this, and you're going to have just way better audio interviews that you're doing. So let's dive in and take a look at a clean feed tutorial and show you how it sounds. So this is the login screen, go set up your account, and then you can uh, get into the main recording um, program and what that looks like. And that's where we are now as I've flipped over here. And it's pretty simple. I mean, this is the really cool thing about this is there's just not a lot going on that's gonna confuse you and make things hard to understand. Now, I will throw you one caveat. Uh, this is going to be a full-blown, um, I pay for clean feed, so I've got a few more bells and whistles than the average person, but, Everything I show you on today's episode of the show will be accessible to a free clean feed account. So you can still get great interviews out of clean feed for most of your purposes. All right. So this is what it looks like once you log in. This is your studio. OK, um, obviously, this is me, Walter, up here at the top. That's indicating uh, sort of like my track. You can see my audio levels are bouncing nicely there on clean feed as well. It's giving me a little bit of option down here to change my headphones if I would like. You'll see a couple of gear settings icons here that are useful tools. If I wanted to change what microphone or I was using, or obviously you should do this every time you go to record, double check which mic is being used. You can click the gear icon and make sure that it's picking up the proper mic. If I wanted to switch that to a different mic, I could then click that drop down and change it over. The next thing to do is um, if you're having any trouble like hearing something or you want to adjust where your headphones are being picked up, same deal. You can make that adjustment there under the gear icon. In my case, I'm going to be using that same mixer as my output. So that's just where you would make those quick little changes if you would like. I like the program so much that often when I'm doing voiceovers and things like that, um, it's almost easier, simpler, and cleaner for me to come in here and record it in clean feed, even as a solo voice person, rather than opening up one of my pro audio recording platforms. Um, so it's just kind of cool how easy it is to pop in here, and I'll show you how easy it is to then actually record. Uh, but the first thing I want to show you is how to invite a guest onto the program. And it's very easy. You have a connect button here. So very similar to how you're going to send a Zoom link to someone to connect with you. So I'll click connect here. Now you can have clean feeds, send the email to that person, inviting them to join you on the show. Uh, just type in their name and their email address there. Or if you click advanced, it'll give you some other options here. And I tend to do this. I'll change it over to I'll share the link by myself. That way it's just going to generate a link that we can send on our own. I just do that because I feel like maybe if it's coming from a different sender, people may not know, you know, they may accidentally delete or it might get filtered into some other um, part of somebody's inbox and they might not see that invitation to join you for the show. This way you can just copy the link and send it to a client. Um, you would just type in their name here. Whatever you type in here is what's going to appear in the session. So just make sure that it says what you want it to say. Again, first and last or just first name usually does the trick. This invitation, this link will be active for however many hours you set it for. 
Um, so whatever your purposes there are, go for it. If you and a co-host are going to host every show together, you could just have an unlimited link that they can always use to come join you in your session. And it just never expires. Um, I typically have mine set for 24 hours, which is the default. Um, I don't have a big stressor over whether I, I send the fresh link every time to my guests. Um, so I don't ever use the unlimited. So 24 hours you know, usually works for me because I'm tending to send them the link right before the recording, just my workflow. Okay, so let's say I'm going to invite Walter two to the show. There's another one of me out there. I click invite. There you see the link has been created. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to go paste it into an email, invite that person in. Now you're like, okay, there's no video here, right? And that's correct. This is a tool for audio only podcasting. The audio quality part of it is so good and so stable and so reliable because we're not using a bunch of internet bandwidth to try and push through our internet channels. Um, and that way the audio is getting all of that dedicated push. Therefore, we don't have a lot of compression to the audio happening like what happens in Zoom. And that way we can get the crispest and cleanest audio quality on both ends of the spectrum. All right, so now it's time to record. So let's show you what that looks like over here. We go up into the top left-hand corner and we hit record. All right, so this is what I recommend for everybody who would be recording. This is gonna work for you in almost every situation. It's definitely the way to go if you're doing a two-person recording and you wanna keep things nice and simple. And again, this is available on the free plan. Stereo Split is going to put you on one side of the track. Uh, of a stereo track, and it's going to put your guest on the other side of the stereo track. And what that allows an editor like our team to be able to do is to go in and then manipulate your audio individually. And it does wonders for improved audio quality and the finished product of your show. So I would go stereo split, puts you guys on separate tracks. That way, even if you're louder than your guest, this is a foolproof way to not have that matter, to not have that be a big concern, because you're going to be individually on one side of the track, I'll be individually on another side of the track. Now the pro version, which I have and I use for whenever we're interviewing a whole bunch of people at once, let's say we have four or five people all at once in an interview, I will then in the pro version get access to multi-track and that allows me to have an individual file for every person that is on the conversation. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of interviews like that, it may be worth springing for the pro version or switching to Zoom for perhaps that single episode if it's not gonna be something you're doing a lot. That would be under the multi-track option. But everybody has access to Stereo Split, and that's where I recommend that you go. The other ones I'll explain quickly, my audio only would just be literally you uh, getting recorded. So that's not usually a good one to pick. Um, if you're doing an interview because it's not going to record the other person. I suppose this one could be helpful if you were going to jump on and you wanted somebody else to be able to talk to you while you're recording, like a producer, but have their audio not get recorded. That might be a reason that I can imagine you would use my audio only. Same thing for guests only. If I was producing a show, but I wanted to be able to talk to my, I didn't want to have to be on mute to not get recorded. I wanted to be able to still maybe chime in with comments, like tell my, tell the person I'm coaching or producing for like two more minutes, wrap up. Um, I could say that if I was recording only the guests and my voice wouldn't get recorded. We'll call this one test recording one. I tend to have the day and time added to the file name just because I tend to save multiple files and it just makes sure that I'm getting different versions of the files every time they are saved, but that's an optional thing that you can have checked or not. Then we're gonna hit record. It does start the recording right away. So as you can see, we're beginning to uh, count up here on clean feed, but this is our recording. This is telling us that it is active. It's really easy to pause the recording if you want to. All you do is this big glowing red box. You just click that, it's gray now and it's paused. So then I can then re immediately resume the recording after that. So that's a pretty cool feature to be able to have just kind of an instantaneous pause and then resume of your recording. I love that feature. It's really, really helpful. The other cool thing that I love about clean feed, not only are we getting great audio, a smooth experience, but also we can download and save the show on the fly. And so whenever I'm interviewing a client, I'm saving every three or four minutes, just uh, kind of after the end of every question, after I hand it back off to the co-host or the guest, I just come over here and I click download and it just saves that file instantaneously right to my computer. 
Um, very quick, very easy. You don't have to pause. You don't have to stop. Everything keeps running smoothly. And if for some, some reason your computer crashes, you lose power. If you're doing that regularly, you're not going to lose very much of your interview. I have found it works really, really well. It's really helpful. It downloads very quickly. Um, even though they are WAV files, which are a good sized audio file versus MP3, it still downloads really quickly to your computer and does not, in my experience of doing literally thousands of interviews at this point using this program, um, does not make the, the, the download process doesn't mess with the audio quality or the quality of the interview. Um, something else that, uh, so I'll just download it a second time there. So you can see we've already doubled in time. So it's gone from about eight megabytes to 17 megabytes. And you can see it's saving the same file name. And now just because there's two files of the same name, it's automatically adding the one and then the two and then the three and then the four. Obviously, once you complete the recording and you save it one final time, um, you're just going to probably send that most recent, that last version that you saved to your production house, or that's the one that you're going to edit yourself. Uh, if you want to mute yourself during the recording, you just click that, that little green button right there. You can now see that I'm muted. It's still registering that I'm, I'm making audio, but it's not making it to the recording. You see that it's not getting to the recording part here. Also, my guest would not be able to hear me if I was muted. It works as you would imagine a mute, a mute button would. Um, when we have a guest in here, we can also mute them as well. If you're sort of the host of the show and hosting this platform, you can mute that too. So there you go. That's how clean feed works. There's really not a whole lot else to be, um, you know, concerned with or, or frustrated with. It's very easy to do. You can connect and invite more people and have multiple people in a recording. Um, it's pretty simple all the way around. Um, I'll real briefly just show you a couple of other funny little things that you can do on here. Uh, one that some people get a kick out of is maybe using the clips up here. This is where we can add like bumpers and music and things like that. So just real quick, I'll grab this music bed. It's going to load it in there now. And so if I wanted to trigger music live or a sound effect or a bumper or something like that, or even the show intro, you could in theory then click play here. And then you could talk over it or let it play out. It would then stop. You can click it again to stop it. And then the next time you click it, it'll start it over. So just a kind of a cool little sound pad that you could theoretically have as part of this recording. We do most of our sound effects and music input and even the intro and things like that. We do most of that in post-production after the recording. So we don't do a ton of live mixing, although we do every once in a while have a little fun little sound effect or something we might drop into someone's show. And it's more natural to get the live feedback. So we might use that technique on some shows. So let's say that we've reached the end of our recording. We can stop that recording, hit download, and we are all set. We are all done. And then we can hit X and uh, we can close out of that recording and it's ready for us to send. I will show you one other cool thing. You can actually, you don't have to leave this session if you wanted to record something again. So I just hit record and now I'm going to do test recording number two. Um, but this time I'm going to do something a little bit different just for fun. Instead of having a stereo split, I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit and do one that's just me. OK, so you can see that it's recording. It's a single track of just me taping now. But here's the cool thing with clean feed as well. I don't use this feature a ton, but it's kind of neat. You can run two recordings at once. So we have test recording two and we have test recording three. But on this one, let's do guest audio and hit record. Now you can see that I am not being picked up on the guest audio only track. Now we don't have a guest, so nobody's being picked up there currently. But if there was a guest, their audio would be on this track. My audio would be on this track. Similar to the stereo split, you're getting the benefit of putting them in different files, except now everyone truly has their own file in this recording. So kind of a neat little feature how you could have multiple recordings happening at once. Maybe for some reason you want one that's stereo, uh, one that's stereo and then like a backup recording that's everybody on mono. Don't really know why you would need that or want that, but another fun use of the program. Just remember you would need to download both of these files as you go if you're wanting to save as you go along. So that's how clean feed works. Now, do you need the paid version? Again, only if you really want to unlock some of that multi-track recording. Uh, the other thing that it you do get in the pro version of using clean feed that could be helpful every once in a while is being able to make this adjustment here. You see under my microphone, I have it as plus two decibels. That's because naturally this microphone and my mixer, 
they're a little quiet. You can see I'm barely passing halfway on the level meter over here. So I tend to give a little bit of a boost to my audio just to try and match it closer to my guests. Even though we're gonna manipulate it in post-production, the closer we can have it together up front, the better. And you don't have access to this feature, at least not currently, in the free version. So you do need the pro version to be able to manipulate both your input volume and the guest's input volume. But again, if you're recording in separate tracks and it's just you and one other guest, it's usually very easy to overcome and figure out. And you're still going to be miles ahead of where the Zoom audio is going to get you. So just be aware of that feature that's available if you go with the paid version. But for most people starting out, the free version fits what they're looking to do. So that is a breakdown on clean feed. There are other alternatives out there. Um, Riverside and Squadcast handle recordings for podcasts really well also. Um, you're probably going to end up on a paid plan using one of those uh, just because of the features that you're going to want. Those are great answers for video podcasts. In fact, we'll do another one of these tutorials about Riverside specifically coming up in a future video. Um, they operate very very similarly to clean feed in that they are better alternatives to zoom um, but they also are going to have the video component that clean feed doesn't have so if that's an important piece of the puzzle and you still want to level up from zoom um, it's worth looking up riverside and squadcast as your alternatives we'll talk a little bit more again about those in a future video your last option really if clean feed sounds like it's too many moving pieces and it's kind of hard to navigate and figure out for you and you're comfortable with zoom go ahead, stick with that. But there is a big difference in how your audio sounds on Zoom versus clean feed. So let's end today's video with a quick demonstration of the difference in audio quality on Zoom versus clean feed. Okay, so I'm recording my audio that you're hearing right now on clean feed. This is using a good microphone on a mixer um, straight into clean feed uh, with very minimal post processing and uh, you know hardly any compression or anything like that added to this audio. So this is a nice clean representation of what you're getting from clean feed. It's going to be very close to just recording straight into your computer. Um, it's almost like you're not using the internet to exchange your data or information. That's how clean and sharp sounding it is. Um, now you're going to hear what it sounds like in Zoom. Okay, and so now I'm in Zoom. I haven't invited any guests, but I'm just recording straight into uh, the Zoom program. And this is what it sounds like. So this is a good comparison to how the audio picked up in clean feed. And I've got everything optimized. I've got really good settings in Zoom. Um, and I'm using a really good microphone, but you can hear there's definitely compression now to the audio and the quality isn't coming through quite as well. If we weren't using as good of a microphone, you would notice an even bigger difference between clean feed and Zoom as well. And the more guests that you have in Zoom, well, just the crazier trying to conduct a Zoom interview gets and the harder the audio becomes to manipulate as well. Um, but there you go. There you have it. The difference between clean feed and Zoom and why I think clean feed is the clean, clear winner if you're willing to put in a little extra effort to learn the program. Hope you enjoyed the breakdown and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and we'll see you on the next video.